Imagine a world where creating a baby doesn't require sperm, eggs, or even a partner, just a few of your skin cells. Now, imagine someone collecting those cells without your knowledge and using them to make a human being. This is the frontier of human reproduction, in vitro gametogenesis, or IVG. While this is definitely a breakthrough in biotechnology, it's also a total paradigm shift that forces us to reconsider the boundaries of reproduction, identity, and consent. And of course, in true Carolyn fashion, the ethical and philosophical chaos of it all is exactly what drew me in, and it's what I knew you guys would want to hear about. So today, we're diving deep into IVG, which is a groundbreaking technology that could redefine how we think about conception and parenthood and how we regulate privacy. We'll be exploring the science behind it, its potential applications, and the profound ethical questions it raises. Okay, first, what exactly is in vitro gametogenesis? IVG is the process of creating egg and sperm cells in a lab using pluripotent stem cells. These are powerful cells that, given the right signals, can become almost any cell type in the body. There are two main ways to get these pluripotent stem cells. First, from embryos during early development. These are called embryonic stem cells. And second, by reprogramming adult cells, like skin cells, into stem cells. These are called induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs. Scientists will then guide these iPSCs down the developmental path towards becoming gametes, egg or sperm cells. This technique actually has already been successfully used on mice. In 2016, Japanese researchers reprogrammed skin cells from male mice into egg cells, which they then fertilized using other male mice, and then transplanted those fertilized eggs into female mice. This led to the birth of healthy mouse offspring. So you have two male mice, they became the dads of these pups, and then the female mice were used to gestate the embryos and fetuses. Now, only seven live pups resulted from the 630 embryo transfers, but this is still a monumental scientific milestone. And if it can be done to mice, then you know what's probably coming next. The possibilities here are wild, and not in a what if way, more of a get ready, it's coming way. I'm gonna run down some of the possibilities here. First, infertility treatment tops the list. For individuals who can't produce viable eggs or sperm due to age, illness, cancer treatments, etc., IVG could offer a way to have biological children without donors. Next, same-sex reproduction. It's another major potential. In theory, two men or two women could each contribute skin cells to create both sperm and eggs. A child genetically related to both parents without third-party donors. Then we have single-parent reproduction, using cells from just one person to create both gametes. This would produce a child that's a genetic blend of one individual, just like normal sexual reproduction, but solo which raises concerns about genetic diversity and health risks, but we'll get into that later. And another one, IVG could even extend reproductive timelines. Do you wanna wait until your 40s to have a child or even your late 40s or beyond? IVG might bypass the decline in egg or sperm quality entirely. Now, this is all very interesting and exciting, but as stated in my favorite superhero movie, with great power comes great responsibility. Right to remember. With great power comes great responsibility. IVG presents numerous ethical dilemmas, so grab your seatbelt and buckle up because it gets pretty crazy. First, consent. If skin cells can be turned into babies, how do you control who has access to your biological data? Okay, let's say someone swipes your skin cells from a couch, a cup, or a kiss. Could they make a baby with your DNA? The law might eventually catch up, but we know it's very slow. And also the concern is, what about prevention? That's a whole nother story. And I can't help but wonder, how would this play out with celebrities or high net worth individuals? We're already in a world where people sabotage birth control to trap partners, get money, or increase their own media attention. We're going to have to add, they stole my skin cells as a legal defense in a custody case. Imagine sitting in court and hearing, your honor, I've never met this person. They grew this child in a lab from skin cells they stole from my party. That sounds insane, but that's the exact kind of ethical gray zone IVG opens. Second, 
What about designer babies? When you can generate thousands of embryos from a few skin cells and pick which one gets implanted, how do you decide? Do we choose the one least likely to develop disease? The tallest? What attributes do we consider important? Are we optimizing survival or are we now curating life, looking at a menu of options to choose from? And then in line with that gene editing and all of this, IVG, it brings up another side thing that I'm considering. Are we going to have generations of children who look like whichever celebrity was the most popular at the time? Media, celebrities, the internet, etc. They dictate what we determine to be attractive at any given time. We actually see this already, but genetics are a lot more permanent than dyeing your hair, wearing makeup, or dressing in a certain way. And it'll be decided by your parents, not you, which brings up a whole nother level of consent but I'm not gonna dive into that right now. It's just something to take into consideration and remember. Okay, onward. Another point, if wealth dictates access, we're heading into a new form of eugenics. Let's not kid ourselves. If only the rich can afford to produce genetically ideal children and the rest are left with biology as is, that's not equality. Some could argue that's reproductive class warfare. And another side thought, what happens to sperm banks and egg donors? If you could buy high IQ, high attractiveness skin cells on the open market, why bother with traditional donors? The use of IVG is way less invasive than sperm or egg donations. We might be looking at an entirely new fertility economy, which is mind blowing. Okay, third. Genetic diversity and identity. If one person creates both gametes, that's a 100% in-house DNA set like biological self-cloning, but with a twist. Is that safe? Is it fair to the child? Is it ethical to run what is essentially an experiment on someone before they're even born? And that raises the question, does a parent owe their child a certain level of genetic diversity? We've kind of asked this question already and answered it, in that in some states, it's illegal to marry your first cousin. But now we have a very different reason we are asking this question. And the queasiness you get from the idea of marrying your first cousin is not prevalent or present in the idea of using IVG to create a child without a partner. So we need to think about this, because it's getting kind of weird. Fourth, older people having children. Are you now morally obligated to use IVG to reduce risks of miscarriage or certain conditions that may occur because you're having children at an older age? Does technological access come with a new ethical responsibility? I'm not answering that here and now, but I think we should be asking this question. And then finally, regulation. IVG is moving fast, moving faster than legal frameworks. Who gets to regulate this? Governments, corporations, international bodies. And even if laws are passed, enforcement is a whole different animal. Just like digital privacy, by the time regulation arrives, misuse may, probably will, already be widespread. While IVG is still in its early stages, research is progressing rapidly. Scientists at Oregon Health and Science University have already developed methods to create human eggs from skin cells. In addition, the UK's Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority has acknowledged that lab-grown gametes may soon become viable. What's clear is this, human IVG isn't 100 years away, it's likely just a few decades or even less. And it's not just about babies, it's also about biology, law, privacy, power, and the ethics of creation itself. So I want to leave you all with some questions. If creating life becomes something anyone can do in a lab, who decides how it should be done? What regulatory framework would you suggest? Is biological parenthood a right, a responsibility, or both? When technology gives us near total control over how life begins, what do we owe to the life that we create? Let's talk about it. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Pick any question from this video and unpack it. There are a ton to choose from. I read every single comment on my videos. You guys always give me something new to think about, which is something I love about this community because I'm always learning from you. And until next time, stay curious, stay critical, and question everything.